All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to apply some clipping mask in KLWP. Um, I'm sure there's many applications to this. I'm just going to show you a few that I use. Um, this is a request from a KLWP user. And uh, basically, you know, here's a, a visual example of what a clipping mask will do. Uh, before you apply a clipping mask, you might have this rectangular picture right here. And then once you apply a clipping mask to it, like a certain shape, this oval, um, it'll basically hide everything that's not inside of that oval. And that's what we're going to accomplish here. Now in KLWP, here's some examples of clipping masks that I use. For example, you see this circle right here. Well, if I press this star to animate, watch what happens to the circle. Notice the circle kind of uh, turns into a square. And um, I have a square set as a clipping mask, if that's what you want to call it. Also, um, I, sometimes I do find it useful maybe to clip some text. As you can see, this is like a weird way of showing today's uh, date, uh, Thursday, June. Of course, I don't have the actual uh, day of the month, but nonetheless, Thursday in June, you can kind of clip some text. And then down here, I kind of have some scrolling uh, RSS feeds, but if I press this button here, I can transition. And now I have some weather. So now here, I'm like clipping two different things and I want to show you that as well. So let's go ahead and uh, go into KOWP and have a look. And the whole thing here is that really this uh, rectangle that you see sliding up and down, the green right here, and then this blue, it's really just a stack group, but I have it clipped inside of here. So you can't see this green when it slides up, and you can't see this blue rectangle when it slides down. All right, so in KOWP, uh, let's just go ahead and start kind of like the button here. I have a couple of globals. If we go over to globals, I have um, an on and an off. And basically, that's what's going to animate that circle right there. As you can see, the circle does animate. And that's what's doing that there. Uh, the RSS and weather, I have a list global variable where I basically I can toggle back and forth between weather and RSS. So if I set this to weather, you'll notice that this does kind of fade and it shows my weather. Whereas here, I go to RSS and it'll fade and show the RSS. So I'm like clipping two different groups right there with this one down here. Now, if you need more information about global variables, check out some of my other videos. Uh, there's plenty of them up here on the uh, YouTube channel or at my website, idomath.weebly.com slash KOWP. So the first thing I guess we're gonna talk about is this clip shape. Now you want to apply your clip above, and you know, notice like, okay, clip shape is above this thing here. So you wanna apply it above whatever you're trying to clip. So if I go to clip shape, is something that you can't see, but it's this square. And let me just go over to FX. This is where you actually apply the clip. If I set this to none, it's gonna be this white square. And notice it is behind, it is behind, let me back up one step. It is behind the time group that I have, this red circle here. That's what that time group is. But the reason why it's behind it is because of the way we have these things layered. But like I said, you do want to layer it uh, here. Technically, it's behind it when you uh, see it here. But I think of it as being above um, in the order that we have these things lined up in our root. Now, if you can apply clips. They don't have to be directly in root. But the ones that I'm showing you here are the one that I'm showing you here is in root. So we got clip shape, that's that square. And basically I want to, if I go back to this clip shape, this white square, if I go over to FX and I go to mask and I go to clip next module, it takes that square away. But basically it's going to show, um, and since I have it on clip next module, the very next module is this one here. So I applied the clip next module to this particular shape and it's going to clip the next module, which is this time group that we have here. And as you can see, if I tap on that, that is going to be that red circle in that time. So as long as this thing is inside of that square that I just uh, applied the clip next module to, as long as it's inside of it, it's going to show up. But anything that goes outside of it, it's not going to show. Now, let me go back up here to clip shape one more time. If I go over to FX and take that clip off, so I go to none. And now if I animate this circle, notice you're going to see all of this circle here, but when we apply that clip, it's just going to show the circle at whatever's inside of that square. So now let me apply this one more time. Clip next module. As you can see, it takes away everything that's on the outside. So that gives it a nice effect, you know, effect of going from a circle to a square. As a matter of fact, what we can do, if I go to that clip shape and I change the square to say a uh, triangle, notice how, of course, obviously you're going to have to adjust your triangle here. Um, let's see, okay, maybe not so much there. Um, 
trying to get that 747 in there. But notice, you know, now it looks kind of crazy. There's our circle, but if we apply this, it's only going to show whatever's inside of that shape that we decided to pick right there. So um, I'm going to just exit out of this and keep it at the square, but showing you that you can change the shape and still uh, achieve your clipping mask or whatever you're trying to do with that. So here you see a hexagon and what you can do there is you can actually apply some clips inside of a group as I mentioned earlier you don't have to necessarily apply these clips uh, to root so clips in a group um, that's basically encompassing all of this stuff you see here I have two uh, shapes no clips are applied to these basically this shapes the hexagon the full uh, yellow off yellow color and then this one here is the uh, stroke that I have going around it however I'm applying the clips inside of this stack group so inside of this stack group here, and this is something worth mentioning, um, whatever you apply, this is what I've had a little bit of trouble with. The rectangle that I have here is actually, and you can't see the rectangle because that's what I have the clip next module applied to, but let me go to none. And it's sometimes when you do this, you'll notice that it does not actually show it once you take away that none. But let me uh, save this and go back to the home screen. And now you can see that that white piece there. So I want to clip that Thursday. And as you can see, you can still see the T, the H, and the U even down here. But when we apply that clipping mask to it, it's just going to show the parts that are inside of that rectangle, as I mentioned earlier up here with the uh, circle changing into a square. So back in KOWP, if I go back to FX on this white rectangle and I go to mask, and clip next module again as you can see sometimes it's not applying it but if I save it go back to the home screen now you can see that it is just showing that part that was inside of that white rectangle that's one thing that you can run into when you're messing with clipping mask inside of the advanced editor sometimes it won't necessarily apply but the other thing too is this um, the whatever shape that you're using the clip for if I go over to this same thing and I go over to position I don't have it positioned. I don't have any padding applied to it. Uh, I've run into some issues of where I try to do a clip mask and I try to apply some padding to the to the shape that I want to use the clipping mask on. However, I do find it better um, if I want to hide part of some text or something, this is the actual item that I'm going to apply some padding to. So notice here if I start bumping up the third, as you can see it does kind of move some things around because I do have them in a stack group. But nonetheless, I apply the padding to the object that I want to hide, not to the actual clipping mask object. And I find that that does give me a nice effect here. So uh, here, down here at the bottom, pretty much the same thing, except I have, you know, the clip, the shape, the rectangle, which you can't see, but over under FX, I have it on clip next module. So beneath that on this, I apply that text item. And this is the one that I actually apply the padding to if I want to move something around. As you can see, I have some bottom padding there. And to achieve this effect where it looks like they're almost touching each other right here in the center, that's why I put these things in a stack group. As you can see, I have a stack group with two overlap groups in it because the overlap groups are what have the clipping mask and the text in both of these. And then underneath the layer for that stack group, um, I applied some of that margin vertically centered and then you know you can adjust the margin to actually move these things closer or farther away from each other and just fine tuning that it kind of looks like they're they're one piece and it's I don't know maybe you like the way that looks maybe you don't but I have seen some people use uh, clips or they may just overlap um, a particular text item with another shape to show you that um, I'll say that for another video because you don't necessarily have to use clipping mask to do to achieve this effect here in all honesty what you can do is you can just apply a bunch of different uh, shapes in here that are all the same color because if I've had like I could have 20 shapes inside of this hexagon here and as long as they're all the same color and I'm not doing any shadows or anything like that you couldn't even tell it just look like one solid shape and you can actually do different overlap groups or stack groups to hide text items but nonetheless you can apply clips to text to cut off certain parts of the text now probably the the most interesting one here is the way I'm animating these things here. So now I got a button but clip multiple. So something here, we got this particular shape. Let me zoom back out. 
and under FX I have clip all and when you choose clip all versus clip next module it's going to clip everything beneath it but what you will find when you practice with this so if I'm clipping multiple it will clip everything beneath it but now I don't have any more clips applied but if you did apply another clip later on it's kind of like this one and this one they'll counteract each other but under clip multiple everything that's beneath it before you have another clip down here which I don't have it'll clip all of these things so let me go to this clip multiple let me go over to FX and I'm just going to change it to none now when I take that away as you can see this little RSS feed that I have going on here this RSS is really just a stack group with two pieces two overlap groups in it the first overlap group is the rectangle and it says something about IBM the rectangle is the yellow rectangle um, IBM blah 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 as you can see there and then the other one is going to be this uh, pinkish purple colored one with the results from case mod as you can see right there so it's a stack group and basically I'm making these rectangles pretty much the same size as the let me go back to my clip multiple pretty much that rectangle there just about the same size 600 by 200 let's go to the RSS one more time let's look at that rectangle and 585 by 185 so I did adjust the size a little bit but I, I'm not applying a clip definitely not applying a clip to the actual yellow rectangle here by us applying that clip let me go back to it under clip multiple FX and if we set this back to clip all now it's hiding you know you're only seeing one of those rectangles and now how do I have this animation going basically it works the same for weather and RSS weather is the exact same thing as the RSS one except obviously I changed the colors um, let me show you the weather there here comes the weather the blue and the green as you can see um, I do have one showing the cloudy and then the other ones the high and the low temp for the day but the animation for both the RSS and the weather are pretty much the same I have them looping with return so basically that's what's going up and down it's looping and returning you will have to fine-tune your speed notice my speed is like just some some number that made it made it so that I can scroll this up a certain speed and scroll this down a certain speed or I'm thinking more like a distance because you don't want to go bumping this thing up to like 222 because that notice it's just flying off the screen it's going to come back right here in a second but that's not what we want so that's why I had that at 26 and that's just something that you'll have to fine-tune to get um, the effect that you're looking for. Um, angles and delays and all that, the, the longer you put your delay, the longer each one will show. So just keep those animation things in mind. And then the formula here, remember I did show you a global variable earlier where um, I had, uh, I called it go one, and basically I want this thing to say, okay, if go one is not equal to weather, I want it to fade out, otherwise I want it to fade in. And as you can see, I do have the fade out animation applied there. Um, the RSS, just to show that to you real quick, again, it's a stack group with two overlap groups in it, as I mentioned earlier, and underneath animation, notice it's the same loop with return, pretty much the same speed, angle, duration. You can adjust the delay for that one if you want the RSS to show a little bit longer, that way you can actually read it. Um, i tell you what, I'll bump this up to like 40. We'll back out of there, and let's see, okay, border border is this thing right here and notice that's also getting clipped as well uh, because it's underneath that clip all shape that we have right here or clip multiple when we clip all of these so that border is clipped as well so that border may be actually lying out here somewhere maybe it is maybe it isn't it doesn't matter I just know I have it lying inside of this clip multiple rectangle and it's only going to show the pieces that are inside of that rectangle that's why you do not again you do not see the green up here and then when this blue goes down you don't see it back here so that gives a nice effect of maybe like you know almost like a window this stuff's inside of a window but I did adjust the delay of RSS so let's save this let's go back to the home screen all right so right now I'm showing my weather my weather's delayed two seconds so as you can see it's kind of going every two seconds it does move but if I switch over to RSS this should show for a little bit longer, four seconds. As you can see, it is sitting there a little bit longer. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Yeah, so that one lasts a little bit longer. That way you can read it. But um, yeah, you know, two main things I do use Clipping Mask for. There are other applications, I'm sure. Um, one is to achieve an effect like this, where you can kind of change the shape as it animates. That's exactly what it looks like is going on there. And then down here, I definitely use this one a lot to kind of create an animated widget 
um, of pieces going back and forth and then using KOWP we can animate into another one and it looks like one seamless transition with one piece and you know we're hiding all this other stuff behind it. Feel free to work with clipping text items as well but um, yeah that's how I use clipping mask and KOWP and that's it for this video. Hope it helped.